earlier, Max had to take a trip to accident and emergency. Let's see if he's getting better. Back in Sheffield, four-year-old Max is being treated with antibiotics for cellulitis, an infection of the skin that causes redness and swelling. It all started a couple of days ago when Max was watching his favourite monster film on TV. He was running about, joining in with the fun, when he tripped and cut his cheek on the table. Max's mum treated the wound at the time and it looked like it was healing, but underneath an infection was spreading. So with a lot of swelling around his eye, we need to make sure that his eyesight isn't affected by the cellulitis infection. Over to eye specialist Dr Imran Hack to see what he can see. I need to have a look at your eye. Is that OK? Yeah. Yeah? The, the layers of the skin, if they become inflamed, that's basically what cellulitis is. In this case, we're worried if it's orbital cellulitis, that's when it involves the actual area where the eye is. Um, if that's involved, then it can sometimes not only damage the eye, but track back into the brain itself, and that can cause problems. So, Dr Imran makes sure Max's eye is moving normally and then he gets out a nifty bit of headgear. This lets him look right into the back of Max's eyeball. And it'll show if the infection has spread from Max's face into his eye. I spy with my big eye. With this, what I wanted to do was really look at the back of the eye and see if there's any pressure on the optic nerve. That's a little nerve that leaves the back of the eye to go to the brain. In his case, the infection hasn't spread that far and it's only limited to the skin itself and not involving the eye. So I think Max will be absolutely fine as long as he gets antibiotics. He'll probably be home in the next couple of days. With his eye given the all clear, now Max just has to wait for the antibiotics to tackle his skin infection and get the swelling down in his face. Day two and it's time for an update. I'm getting better. That's good. Uh, his eye has gone down considerably, uh, but the inflammation is still inflamed underneath his eye. It's quite a difference from day one, although he's not ready to go home yet. Oh, no. he's in the phone. Max has to stay in hospital for another night to get more antibiotics into his system. But the next day, there's good news. But yes, a lot better. It does look much less swollen now. Now that he's had antibiotics for two days, yeah. Max has improved dramatically. The cellulitis has been curtailed and we're happy for him to go home. And by the looks of it, Max can't wait. Maybe that monster movie's on the telly again. Bye. Bye, Bye Max. Max. I'm in awe of a very special group of people and I want you to see exactly what they do. So meet the A-team who fly by the seat of their pants in an awesome helicopter. This is the Midlands Air Ambulance. This airborne medical service has three helicopters always ready for emergency action. With a highly skilled team made up of paramedics, doctors and, of course, pilots, they look after six counties, serve five and a half million people and can get a patient to hospital in just 15 minutes. Always on standby, they're ready for every call. Flying high on today's special assignment are Dr John Bingham and paramedic Steph Cormack. When the phone rings, they have to be ready to go within seconds. It's five o'clock and a call's just come in. The team write information down on special pads on their knees for speed and to keep their hands free. With the helicopter fueled and ready to go, it's not long before they're airborne. Helicopters are small, so why wait at base while the team are called to the scene of an accident where a car is on fire? Got uh, reports of an adult who's been involved in some form of a car fire. The car fire out the window now. It was like a huge bonfire. It was like lots and lots of smoke. When you're landing, you see this car on fire. What kind of things are going through your head? The first thing is always the safety. You know, where can we land where we can get to the patients as quickly as possible, but we're far enough away or in a place where we're not going to be involved with the smoke, with the fire, in the, in the way of the fire crew. The fire's obviously still going, so we're going to be staying a safe distance back. As the fire service tackled the burning car, Dr John assessed the driver. 
didn't have any burns injuries. I mean, that's one thing that could cause a huge problem. Um, and fortunately, he could tell us that he's not been burned. There's nothing from the flames. From the breathing in the smoke point of view, the issues that we often see is that people have or develop respiratory distress. They have difficulty breathing. That's so your throat seals a bit sore, does it? No, it's not sore, just... <clears throat> A bit of a cough, a bit of a cough, very yeah, yeah, yeah. But your breathing feels okay, yeah, yeah. no other problems with dizziness, no pain, anything else no. at all. Let's have a quick listen to his chest anyway. Okay, so as well as being able to get to a scene quickly, an air ambulance crew has another huge benefit. With a doctor on board, casualties can be assessed and often treated on site. So we're just going to get a full set of observations just to make sure that he's breathing normally, his oxygen levels are good, blood pressure's okay. And if following that, if he's still good, then actually there's no reason why he can't be discharged from scene. It was a large and dangerous fire, but now the flames are under control. What about at the end? Is there anything left of the car now? Or? It's basically just a shell. The tyres have melted off, it's stuck to the road, there's nothing inside. Even the engine, it doesn't even look like an engine, it's just bits of wires hanging out. It was a lucky escape. And with the patient discharged from the scene, the team were able to head back to the helicopter. Well, we need to get things packed up relatively quickly and just get moved on and uh, on to the next job. You never know what the next call is going to be. It's just the nature of the job. With such fast helicopters and great expertise on board, the air ambulance are a vital addition to our emergency services. They're definitely the team I'd want to help me.